It's a very random, okay? First question. Have you ever been to the Isle of Man? <laughs> what? What? Well, it says what kind of a question? It says ask Annie I don't, anything. But, I, but it's, actually, yes. Yeah. I, I have. And how did you find it? I found it quite easily on the plane. Oh! <laughs> and um, I did a gig there, and all I remember about it was, was, was something about a castle. There was a castle there that's really... But, why do anyone want to know why you've been to the Isle of Man? I was I mean, just wondering because my fam uh, half my oh, family is from the Isle of Man. Oh, you're from there, OK. Well, no, I'm not, but half the family Well, is. I have only nice things to say good. about it. There you good. go, good. Ah, at, least I, at least I know now why it you want said, to know. said, ask anything. Yep, all right. Go on, Chris. Mm. Go on. What is your musical guilty pleasure? Um, well, we all got loads. Yeah. But one of them, this is, this is probably something, oh, oh, get her. Um, actually, choral, choral music. Really? Yeah, um, things like Handel, uh, Messiah, and I'll tell you why. Um, it's not a very um, very serious answer, but um, when I was at school, we was a, I was at all-girls school, and there was a boys' school, all boys, next door. Right. And the only time we were allowed to meet was if you joined the school choir. Yeah. Ah, so oh, so, I, yeah. I joined school choir. I, I can't sing, which is very unfortunate with a name like Nightingale. I'm right. to be a singer. Yeah. Um, but they kind of let me carry on. So I used to sing this quite deep voice, and I think they just sort of mixed me out of the mix, you know? Um, but I actually did enjoy the music. And that is what we sang, so that is my guilty pleasure. Wow. But really, it was just a chance to meet fellas, wasn't oh, it? Oh, it yeah. totally was. I used, to, I used to follow someone home and was a stalker. Did you? I was a teenage stalker. See, I'm not surprised. No. Is there that, you are, look yeah. how you end up Radio 1. Yeah. yeah. All right. OK, another question for you. I'm loving this, by the way. This is worth staying up for. If you had to be handcuffed to another Radio 1 DJ for 24 hours, Annie Nightingale, who would you choose and why? Is that your question? Yeah. Could do quite a who you wouldn't want to be. Well, yeah, that would be an easy one. Why did you write that one? Yeah. Um, you, do you know what? If you want, you can have that question instead. No, no, I don't, no actually, that, there's quite a good... Um, I'll give you quite a good answer, quite a recent reason for this. Yeah. The answer would be Tim Westwood... Mm. Um, really? Yeah, because, you know, I don't know, if you follow him on Twitter, he's very funny. Yeah. And um, he and I asked him about this because he said something about he got his shoe caught in the tube door. Doors, tube doors were shutting. Yeah. He stuck his foot in the door to try and get them open, which is a potentially very dangerous thing to do. Yeah, it is. And he managed to apparently wriggle his, um, his uh, foot out of his shoe because the tube doors did not open again, and I mean, he would have been, could have been dragged. Oh, it's no, that's horrible. Bad. Bad. Mm. Yeah, um, and I thought, well, if he could get his shoe foot out of his uh, shoe that's shut in the tube doors, yeah. then I reckon he could probably get you unhandcuffed. Oh, that's perfect. A clever answer. Perfect. Would you last twenty four hours with Westwood, though? Oh, he's great. I'm a great fan. Absolutely. He's a nice man, isn't he? The big yeah. dog. I'm very do you funny. Know what? I've always liked him when I first joined Radio One. He was probably the first, the first DJ. First, yeah. he was probably the first DJ to be like welcoming, welcome to Radio yeah. One, welcome to the family, and all that. And I was really surprised. Like I would never put money on Westwood being that guy. I forgot to tell you actually. Talking of him being friendly at the back of the studio, many, many, many hours ago. Oh I think yeah, when we were on with uh, with Fern. Yesterday, would that have been? I saw that. I remember um, that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Tim came in and he left uh, a bottle of stuff for you, which is like this sort of, it's like a vitamin D or B Yeah, it's vitamin thing. D drink. Liquid sunshine, it's called. Ooh. Apparently it's supposed to perk you up. Well, we no. should have a go at it now, Chris. Go uh, on. I'll tell you what, I don't mind. But not only did he give it to me, he came back four hours later and went, Yo, have you tried this yet? You've got to drink it. It's great. And I'm like, do you know we did the, the big weekends, Radio and Big Weekends? I know this is Ask Any Anything, but I've got to tell you this. Westwood and I do the Sound Clash on the outdoor stage. Yeah. We did it last year. The sun is blazing down. It's really hot. Me and him are doing a DJ battle. He plays a song, I play a song, the crowd cheer or boo. But halfway through, and it's really hot. And he comes up to me and goes, whispers at me and goes, Yo, man, it's really hot. You should really put some sun cream on. <laughs> <laughs> he's all about the safety. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't think he'd say that. I wouldn't have thought.
Oh, right. little. All right. Can we crack the questions up, Annie? Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. All right, just a couple, a couple more each, right? Or one more each. I have a few and I don't know which one to do. You know any more than I do, right? I like that one there. I bet I know what you're going to ask. Well, I have some very cheeky questions. Yeah, I thought you might have. I've got, like, <laughs> I've got... Here, well, here are three questions, and I know I'm going to tell you which one I'm going to go for. Who's the most famous person you've ever slept with? Who's the most famous person you've ever turned down? And what's the most embarrassing thing you've done whilst drunk? I think I'm going to choose who's the most famous person you've ever turned down. Ah. Ah. Um, gonna... Turned down in what way? I mean, do you mean um, a drink? Lift home? No. No? What? Um, what you, you know what I mean, <laughs> Annie Nightingale. Um... Marriage. Ah, whatever you, whatever what, what, you want. Ah. Have, have you turned down a famous oh, marriage? Loads of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People always propose a marriage. <laughs> you, you're to brat. Um, who have I turned down? I've turned down um, Motorhead, uh, Jeremy Kyle. Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy Hang on, pa well, not all of Motorhead. Jeremy, what do you mean, just Lemmy? Uh, Jeremy Paxman. Uh, Jeremy Clarkson. No. Yeah, three of Radiohead. <laughs> um, all of JLS. <laughs> and um, Simon Cowell. Ah, it's quite a list. I've heard that J all of JLS, you haven't turned them all down. That's what I heard. Yeah, that's what Marvin told us. Yeah, don't name names, Dave. Sorry. All right, last uh, one. I'm going to ask the uh, the other one that, that you thought about then. Uh, what's the most embarrassing thing you've done whilst drunk, Annie Nightingale? Well, because obviously a lot of things you can't remember. Well, sure. yes. You know, that's the whole sort of point, really. Yeah. <laughs> um... Uh, a couple spring to my um, one was um, an end of tour party on a bus in Romania and um, there was a kind of a rule there was three bands and uh, me and there was no there's been no cameras or anything and this bus was going to go right across the Carpathian Mountains at night and the roads there no headlights no lights at all yeah. so you might kind of see a hay cart come the other way right. swerve out the way the driver does and were people doing coach surfing you know swinging what across it was quite a <laughs> terrifying wild, terrifying but yeah. great great party the next thing I knew I was sitting on on this bus and it was daylight and I thought oh where he he throw where's the bus to Gatwick I went, no, you're not. We're still at Bucharest Airport. <laughs> so that was quite fun. But probably the best was waking up in a hotel and having to phone reception and say, oh, excuse me, uh, what country is this? Oh, oh what's a cool I'd love story. to do that. Really? Me too. Yeah. I mean, that's a cool story. I mean, I've been I've been locked out of hotel rooms naked before, like like most people have, and, and often you're not sure what day it is, but to ask what country it is, that's brilliant. <laughs> that is a great, great, great story. <laughs> I'm going to tell everybody that. Right. I've got to. So do you want to know what country it was? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I wasn't sure whether it actually it was in oh. Holland or Germany. I've been to a festival and um, I had no shoes either. <laughs> so I woke up at a hotel room and not knowing what country's in and no shoes. And I thought, how am I going to get on the British Airways flight with no shoes on? How do I explain this, you know? So, uh, no, anyway, that, that's it. You don't need to know anymore. <laughs> oh, yes, we do. No, you don't, and I don't yeah. think we're going to find out. No, that's the best bit. <laughs> Annie, thank you for letting us ask you anything. That's all I right. That. Do you know what? We should do this every week on our we show. We should do, shouldn't we? Yeah. And by the way, if you want to know any more about Annie Nightingale, she's not going to tell you tonight, but you can go and get her book, which is an amazing read. Where most of the answers are. Yeah. Oh, by the way, and it's a tiny amount of the answers, by the way. Yeah, there's I think some, so. I need some... to write another, another oh, book. Oh, Annie, you, well, yes, yeah. you do. You do need to write another but book. I am doing a film. I'm doing a documentary film for the BBC. Are you? Mm. So some of the answers... About you? Well, really, I want it to be about the story of the underground music and all the underground music that I've experienced yeah. through my life. And right. The people who've changed changed the direction of music and stuff like that. So that it'll be a mixture about me, but about the yeah. music, yeah. All right. Well, that's good. Well, we'll look out for that. Yeah. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, she's not going yet. She'll be here all night if we let her. Miss Annie Nightingale. Thank you. JLS. Oh, who'd have thought? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it's 18 minutes past three. BBC Radio One.
Unorthodox. We call our own shots. Registry 2 featuring example, Unorthodox. I like Bring that. one with Annie Nightingale. Whoa, that sounds good. Oh, by the way, yes. earlier on, mm-hmm. when you were sort of talking to Kate Moss, sort of, right, were you? Right. Or what, well, what was all that about? Right, it? so Kate Moss was watching yep. us on the telly. Oh, you still are, Kate. Come on. It's a party girl. She was meant to be coming in, but she was having her hair done. 11 o'clock at night. Sounded like an excuse, didn't it? Half 11 No, you, what you said was that she said that she knew her roots doing. That's yeah. what you said. I know, was Nick said that. I never said that. Oh, okay. So because she was watching on the camera, I thought I would give her a message on yeah. the camera and say hi. So did she get back to you? No. No, nothing, <laughs> Kate, Kate, well, nothing Kate, yet. If you're still up, so I expect you are, then t- text me and I'll pass it on. <laughs> I think it's so funny. Well, I think so. she used to phone me up um, Saturday nights when I was on 4am doing the Saturday night yeah. party. Right. And I'd be going, Kate, I'm trying to be on the radio. Please, will you stop phoning me up? Oh, I'm like that with George Clooney. Every every Friday for the golden hour, Randy. Is that that? Is it 1980? I'm like, George, you can't <laughs> enter. Go away. It's a nightmare. <laughs> right, if you want to give us some money, if you've enjoyed Annie this morning, you want to give us a couple of quid for comic relief, you can text the word Chris to 70011. And by texting the word Chris... We will give a pound to cut one. Well, you will give a pound to mm. cover relief. It costs a pound plus your standard network mess, a message charge, and the whole pound goes to cover relief. Got to be 16 or over. Always has to bill pays permission. Do you know how fast I can read this now? Yeah. I've done this every time. <laughs> You're going to be 16 or over. Always has to build page permission. Full terms and conditions and to donate online. Go to bbc.co.uk forward slash radio one. There you go. It's write the word Chris on a text now and send it to 70011. That's a pound into the kitty for current relief for our ridiculous challenge. And that will be great. So if you've enjoyed watching and listening to Annie, it's got to be worth a pound, right? Yes. Thank you. You'll be saying that in your sleep, won't you, the next couple of days? I swear I will never say it again after 10 30 this morning. <laughs> Until the next time we have to read out terms yeah. and conditions. Tiny temper. Oh, I'm all over it. Don't laugh at me, Annie, just because I almost missed the end of that. You never miss it. No, you, this is a. It, you could actually do this in your sleep, couldn't you? I mean, that's the whole kind of point, really, isn't it? I switched to CD off earlier. We were mucking around with Fern Cotton. We had to do a link to the TV for this morning with Philip Schofield and Holly. Was that today or yesterday? Yeah, today. And I, put, I thought, shall I pretend to be, like, collapsing? When they yeah. throw oh. to me, shall I just go... <laughs> <laughs> so me and Fern are messing around and I didn't realise when I did that I managed to pause the CD ah, ah. and all of a sudden I'm pressing the buttons and I'm going can't hear anything in my headphones <laughs> and I look through the window and the entire room is staring going what are you doing? I'm like, oh sorry are you allowed to? you're allowed to make as many mistakes yeah. as you want though can't you? thank god <clears throat> kind of proves it's live as oh well. it's definitely live you can tell by Dave's voice. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't, pre- you wouldn't put this out if it's pre-recorded, <laughs> would you? Actually, no. You, you, probably, you'd probably redo not. it. So, um, um, shall I tell you something here? Miranda Kitten What said, a nice name. It's not a lovely name. She said, I, well, this is hours ago, obviously, I set an alarm for 1.45 a.m. to see you and Chris and Dave on TV together. Do you have a day off tomorrow, after all? Uh, oh, no, she, I thought she was saying... You have a day off. No, she's saying, I do have a day off after all tomorrow. Oh, oh so she's just, she's just boasting then, yeah, isn't she? just showing off. Well, I'm sure she meant it the nicest way, though. Yeah, sure. And um, Superwoman469, uh, when I was asking people on Twitter, I'm oh, okay. um, AA nice again on Twitter. AA. <clears throat> AA nice again. Uh, uh, what would you do to raise money? What would the extreme things you do to raise money? And this person said, I would paint myself green, plus my hair, and go to work. And blag the customers to donate. Is that wacky enough? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Uh, Chris and Dave, well done. You guys are killing it. I'm just up and couldn't wait to tune and see if you were still on. <laughs> still still here. here. You are the legend that is the Saviour of Radio 1. Only a few more hours to go. You can do it, Andy, in person on Thank terrain. you, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Okay. I don't uh, find that freaky that people are going to bed and then waking up and putting the telly on going, are they still there? They're still there. I know. How about this one, Chris? Yes. says, I just got up to take my son to school. 